welcome back to the Torque Test Channel. Today, after long await, we finally have the Astro 4980 on the Air Hammer Dyno, or as even they make no issue calling it, Big Nasty. A designation given to it by Eric O of South Main Auto, and one that has stuck with it because of the no-nonsense, unapologetic power this model is known for. All right, moment of truth. Will she drive out a ball joint? Down my bit, my quick chuck. I'd say Big Nasty did a good job. There's our ball joint, took it out like a boss. This one here is courtesy of a viewer and now friend of the channel, Jonathan from Michigan, who sent us this way back when we were building our Air Hammer Dyno because we wanted to make sure our little rig could handle the beans. It's not much use to you if we dyno all the popular 401 shank air hammers, then once we get around to something like this, it blows it apart into pieces, all that comparable data now lost in the process. We then never know how a 498 shank air hammer like this one compares to some of the best 401s in the market. Because none of those tools have power figures that can be compared, well, until we came along. And this is the purpose of today, regardless of any bias someone like me might have for a tool such as this at this point, it's realistic to expect that a larger bore size, larger piston diameter, 498 shank air hammer like this one very likely is and should be more powerful than a 0.401 inch size air hammer. That won't be an earth shattering discovery, but by how much and not compared to just any old options as well, but some of the best ones on the market. And why is that important? Well, there's quite a trade off in going up in size with air hammers. For one, maybe you don't want the thing you're pointing at to potentially turn into dust. But ignoring that, all of your 401 shank air hammer bits and attachments will no longer fit. And we do not recommend 401 to 498 adapter reducers as they all eventually turn into frag grenades. And yeah, there's a ton of 401 shank tools and attachments that go well beyond just air hammer bits. One of the things lacking in 0.498 inch is a good selection of extra long bits. And through our connection with Astro now, and requesting these to be made and even having Eric O himself pick out some sizes, Astro's putting out some new 12 inch and 18 inch long taper punches, chisels and hammers soon. And that helps fill in some spots, but compared to 401, it's a wide world of attachments you'll be missing out on by going this route. But really who's buying a 498 size big boy without already owning a 401 anyways? Likely this 250 or so dollar purchase isn't your first air hammer one, I mean, we've tested some 401s up to $475, and CP's 498 model seems to be going up by the day. But chances are, if you're pulling out a 498, it's because a smaller hammer wouldn't get the job done. And at that point, you might not be left with a whole lot of other options. Another downside is thought to be weight and size of these things, but by our numbers at 5.3 pounds and 10 inches in length, she's less big than she is nasty. That's under the current 401 shank front runners like Snap-on's 10.6 inches in length and especially Harbor Freight's Chief at 11.3. Let's get into the beans though and see how it compares against some of the best and our top pick air hammers out there. Here's a test we call Max Power, our top picks of Matco, Snap-on, and Ingersoll Rand 119 Max on screen. A nice spread there from 48 down to 3900 PSI, which is around 17 to 20,000 pounds of force experienced at the load cell. And here's Big Nasty. Well, enough beans to knock over our background. 5800 over the 4800 Mako, or about 2,000 PSI, nearly 9,000 pounds over that Ingersoll Rand. And this is some of the highest scoring 401 air hammers we've tested. Not bad. One thing the 4980 is not known for is its trigger feathering. It's more of a trigger range from say, third degree to first degree murder. Another air hammer not known for its positive trigger attributes is the Harbor Freight Chief. That being the main difference between it and a Mac Tools one, in our opinion, our minimum power test is trying to throttle back that power just using trigger control. So here's how the Chief looks like on a dyno curve versus the Snap-on and IR 
lower is better. Twenty-five fifty-four, around five times higher than that IR, and well above the snap-on. There's no doubt that the Chief makes some serious power when you want it to, though, as we've shown before. And here's that forty-nine eighty. Three thousand three hundred and sixty-three. Yeah, that's up there. You better treat this thing like a loaded gun and only point it at what you intend to destroy. That's more than a Chicago pneumatic 7150 makes best case scenario at higher pressure. Makes us want to take a look at that CP717, that 498 shank Chicago, and see if that one's trigger is that much measurably better than this, and perhaps unseat wherever this 4980 is going to rank at. Our last testing series is called Best Case Scenario, Shop Realistic 150 PSI Line Pressure that the gun causes to drop to whatever it causes it to. Here's the Mako Snap-On and IR again. 5250 so and 5233 to beat, that Snap-On really liking the extra PSI power like most of their tools do. Here's the 4980, a class of gun that if you don't have the air supply, it likely won't be as impressive as it could be. Six thousand four hundred and nine. Now twelve hundred psi above the next closest four hundred one. This is the type of tool you feel in your chest, even just standing next to it. So roughly twenty to thirty percent more powerful than some of the most powerful four hundred one shank air hammers on the market across our testing. We don't know if that is a linear relationship, like maybe going from four thousand psi to six thousand takes twice the amount of beans. It's hard to say, but it's certainly a noticeable difference going from say a snap on even that snap-on to a 4980 when trying to push out a stubborn ball joint. Let's see what our rank chart has to say about it though. And spoiler alert, this list is heavily weighted to favor power, since no power figures really existed out there for air hammers, and we want to display that here, so yeah, it's going to do well in this crowd. Its max and BCS runs here are turned into points as 58 and 641, with the best case scenario being more heavier weighted. It was able to generate up to 27,559 pounds of force against the load cell, shown here in case you're curious. Then power range is this figure minus this figure, the amount of change between full throttle and attempting just partial throttle. On this gun, it's still pretty violent on low, but it makes a ton of beans over here, so that's still somewhat decent points. At 10 inches long, it's really a girth over length sort of scenario, and altogether not all that long with the quick change chuck attached, a massive 64.1 beans per inch. $250 is not cheap, but also in this crowd, not offensive either, and you'll likely be wanting a $40 to $50 quick change chuck as well, but that's 11 points. Totaling a whopping 822.9, and well, yeah, slapping this guy up top, as you might expect, by over 100 points, and above our theoretical max that we originally put up here, which was sort of designed for 401 air hammers. Big Nasty is sort of big, and definitely nasty. Feels like you're operating more of a browning machine gun than what you might expect from an air hammer, and you should have some CFM and PSI to feed it so that it's happy. This one dropped wall pressure 10 to 15 PSI more at the wall than 401 shank air hammers during use. But there are more 498 shank models out there. No doubt we'll be able to eventually find and test models out there that are able to unseat this one from its now new spot at the throne. Even if it takes a few more pennies to do so, or we have to turn to the same brand yet again to get it done. Appreciate you joining us on our journey towards harnessing everlasting air hammer happiness. Click subscribe to catch the next episode, 
and thanks for watching.